Um, you know, again, holding on to strategy. Um, you know, there are some things that we felt like we could have done better, um, and we worked on those. I mean, again, you, you do uh, have to do a much better job on the boards. You know, you can't be dominated on the glass and expect to win. So, um, you, know, you go back and you watch the film and you can see it clearly. Uh, our guys watch the film and they can see it and they know they need to be better. Jimmy, when Evan's got to deal with a guy who's bigger, stronger, and more experienced, how does he combat that to be able to get those rebounds that you guys need? Well, I mean, there's always leverage. Um, you know, there's positioning and there's being there and being where you need to be earlier. Um, you know, Mitchell Robinson, what he does and how he impacts the game, you know, he's done that against everybody. Um, and, you know, for us, it's not just a one person job to keep him off the glass. And I think too many times when you looked at it, um, you know, it was a one on one fight. And we need to turn it into a two on one, a three on one, uh, whatever we have to do to make sure that we gained the advantage. What was it that you think most attributed to their rebound discrepancy? Um, I, again, you know, the offensive rebounds, and it's something that we talked about, um, we were out of position a lot. And, you know, when you let their ball handlers penetrate your paint and your big guys have to come and challenge shots late, it gives them an offensive rebounding um, advantage. So we need to make sure we're focusing on how we contain the basketball and where we send the basketball to do that. So much of, so many guys talked about the playoffs being an emotional roller coaster and that losing a game that you feel like the end of the world. How have you seen the team respond to this? Uh, I mean, I think we've been good. Um, you know, again, I, I do feel like, you know, our guys are confident in who they are and what they're capable of doing uh, and believe they can get the job done. You know, I, I think the emotions come. Uh, when there's some insecurities about who you are. And, you know, I think our guys are confident and believe in themselves. Um, you know, last night kind of helps prove a point to a young group of guys where you look around the league and a lot of teams lost, um, you know, the home court. But those teams don't panic. Like those teams who have that experience know where they have to go in order to get better. Um, you know, our guys don't have that same level of playoff experience. But, you know, they know the well that they can go to when they need to call upon it. With the offensive rebounding aspect of New York, how much of preventing that is on the wings as opposed to Evan and Jimmer? It's on everybody. Um, everybody has a position to play and a role to play in that. Uh, and again, from game one to game two, we have to be better. Yeah, when, again, you, you take a look at it, and, you know, it, it's how a lot of those are created. Um, you know, again, penetration, when you've got bigs whose responsibility is to protect the paint, and they're going to stop penetration, it gives the offense a big an advantage. So there's things like that that we saw where we can improve on. You talked a lot about Isaac and just how defenses approach that particular matchup. And it was clear that the Knicks were okay shading off of him, even one pass away. But making an impact on the defensive end, boxing out Josh Hart and things like that. So when you weigh those two realities, like how do you approach the decision to stick with him or take him out of the game in those kind of moments? Uh, there, there's still ways that he can impact the offense. Uh, and I think that's where we have to uh, you know, get him more often in those positions. Um, again, I'm not going to give strategy away but there are things that he can do that makes him impactful on the offensive end of the floor uh, and makes them have to account for him. What did you think of his defense on Brunson? I think he does a really good job. Um, you know, obviously Brunson is a heck of a shot maker and playmaker. Uh, he can make difficult shots. Um, but I thought Isaac, you know, made it tough and he had to at least shoot it over the top of him. The situation obviously required it yesterday to get those turnovers late when you got the down seven, however it was. But um, was there anything that you found when you were sending to at Brunson that you can use going forward even earlier in the game and sometimes like it's another point? Yes. Stevie, I know you didn't get the production you wanted out of your bench. You kind of look at the film and kind of reevaluate the game plan. Did you chalk that up to just having a bad night or is it also maybe something where you look at changing up your bench rotation? 
Uh, I mean, everything's always on the table, uh, and we go back and we try to figure out, you know, how we can best help and how each individual's strength can be used, uh, and especially in a situation like a, you know, in a playoff series where things can change quarter by quarter and obviously game by game. Uh, so we always take that into account and we'll make the adjustments we think are necessary. Everybody's considered. Say, I, I'm sorry, I can't hear. Uh, he's gone through everything that we've done, I guess. And just looking at the offense the playoffs in general, just yesterday, Jaw, you know, having to be honest, what are your feelings on charges? Uh, I mean, they're a part of the game. Um, you know, it, it's, you know, as a coach, you know, you take pride in your guys being willing to sacrifice their body, um, you know, to lay it on the line for the good of the team. You know, they are something, um, you know, when guys are going full speed forward and elevating the way that they do, um, you know, there is some risk in it for the offensive player and the defensive player. Um, but, I mean, it's a part of the game that I don't think you'll, you know, you'll never see it taken out. Jason, based on what happened with game one, does the, does the message change to your guys? Is there an emphasis on, on other areas? Or do you just say, hey, listen, we're at this point in the season, this is what got us here. How, how, do, you, how do you feel? I mean, you know, again, we, we take it game by game and asking ourselves, did we play to our standard, no matter if it's a regular season game or a playoff game? Um, and, you know, there were areas where I felt we did not play to our standard. And, you know, we addressed it with the group. They agreed with it. Uh, and, again, we'll go out and try to be better uh, on Tuesday. How much of an asset is it to have a, a defense that can create for your, for your offense, particularly in a game like, in a series like this where it could be a lot of slow down and go scoring? Uh, I mean, again, it, it's obviously it's beneficial for us, um, you know, because we typically play at a slower pace. You know, there are times in the games where you just need an easy basket. Uh, and even in that, you know, I thought, you know, they did a better job of scoring off of our turnovers uh, than we did. And I think there's opportunities there for us, you know, when we do turn people over to get out and transition and get some broken floor disadvantaged plays. What's the, what's the skill to force and turn over? Obviously it helps to have long arms. What if, if anything, is the skill? Uh, I mean, it's, the, it's anticipation. Um, you know, to be in a certain place, knowing where the ball is going to move, and then to be able to put yourself in that place as the ball is moving. Uh, so the anticipation, the understanding of the offense that's in front of you and where they like to move the ball uh, and what the next logical pass is. So what was, you mentioned that they did a better job of scoring off the terms in game one. Where, where could you guys have done more there? Uh, I mean, I think we could have put more tempo in it after uh, we got some turnovers. Uh, and, you know, some of their turnovers, we turned back over. You know, so making sure you're taking care of those situations as well. Yeah, I mean, well, he, he's the type of guy, when you go back and look at, you know, their offense over the year, um, they're really good when teams trap him because he's very willing to get the ball out of his hands. And now, you know, it makes the other guys around him better. So, you know, there's a certain mix of things that you have to do to him. Uh, but if you give him any steady diet of one thing, he's intelligent enough to take it apart. What did you just feel like you guys have to do differently than maybe the last two times? Uh, again, I mean, I thought we were better last game than we were the game before, uh, for sure. But, you know, it's a matter of trying your best to keep him in front of you and make him take the shots that you want him to take. Uh, when he gets into your paint, you know what I mean? Like he's lethal with his patience and his footwork. So, you know, trying to limit him from get to the paint uh, and see if you can just make him a contested jump shooter, which he's capable of. But I think those are the shots that you live with over, you know, all the things where he draws fouls, gets to the paint and creates for everybody. Maybe in what way do you feel like taking Darius off the ball was beneficial for you in game one and can be beneficial moving forward in the series? Uh, I mean, again, the, when the ball is in Donovan's hands, uh, I mean, you know, 10 eyes are staring at Donovan. Uh, Darius has the ability at a high level to catch and shoot. Um, you know, the way that they decide to play him, you know, spreads the floor naturally. And uh, it gives everybody else an opportunity to contribute. But his off the movement catch and shoot ability forces people to chase him and keep eyes on him also. So, you know, now you've got both sides of the floor that are being threatened. Uh, and they have to make a decision on where they decide to stop. What can you say to Darius to combat the level of attention that he's 
saw in game one, the level of attention that he saw last year in the play in tournament and stuff like that? Uh, I mean, you know, obviously we, we always talk and, you know, my message to him is don't leave anything on the table. Um, every single shot that you have is a good shot and you shoot them all. Yeah, he, I mean, I don't know, and you guys maybe have this information. I don't know a second year guy who's been in the finals um, for you know, many of these awards, let alone, you know, the defensive player of the year award. Most of these guys come up and offense has got them to where they are. So it takes them a while to figure out the defensive end of the floor. Um, you know, for him to be there as quickly as he is, you know, again, speaks to his intelligence. It also speaks to the job his dad did with him, coaching him coming up, uh, teaching him how to play the game the right way and understanding the values of the game. Um, but like his ability to pick things up, you know, like his ability to recognize game by game, night by night, opponent strength and weaknesses, opponent strategy, and how he can impact and you know stop those things. Like, I mean, it, it's extremely impressive. And again, I don't know if you guys will tell me at some point, but I don't know of a guy you know his age that's had that type of impact. What do you see that next? Like, when you talk about good as he's been, what do you talk about that turns the next step? Being one of those guys here. Yeah, and, and he knows it, and that's the fun part about working with Evan is, um, you know, he wants to take himself to a point where, you know, there are no flaws. Like, he wants to play a perfect game. Um, you know, there are areas defensively that we talk to him about where he can be better. Um, you know, we'll continue to work with him on those things and help him. Going on that, looking at where he was compared to this year, defensively, where has he been? I mean, it's, it's the time that he's spent in the league. You know, like, he now... Last year, you know, he was playing off his wits. You know, now he understands the league and the players within the league. So again, you know, his instincts kick in, but he's able to be in multiple places at once because he understands what the NBA is and what the individual players are trying to do. JB, a lot of your players, this is the first time postseason experience. Do you feel like, did you get the sense that there were some, some hitters from them? And if so, do you feel like, okay, got that out of our system now let's kind of yeah yeah I think it was it was a great experience for him um, you know because there is no way to emulate uh, the NBA playoffs you know you can play as many 82 game seasons as you want to and if you've never been in a playoff game you don't understand and can't you know participate at the level that you would like to um, you know